I want to kind of set the stage, Rebecca, and talk a little bit about how Clarity AI works, how it, where the data sources are that you guys get the data from, and, and with so many companies not reporting you know, their impact on the climate and so forth, how can you be confident that you're, the data you guys are providing to investors is accurate in a holistic picture? Can you just talk us through that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me today. Uh, uh, sure. So at uh, Clarity AI, we gather multiple sources for, of information yeah. from quantitative data to um, qualitative data as well, policies, also controversies, uh, so aggregating data from any events or news. And uh, what we do is uh, we, of course, uh, gather data reported by companies, but also estimate data that is not available. So just to uh, set the context on the, the amount of data that is reported, when you look, for example, at metrics that are more widely reported, like um, CO2 emissions, the first message that you get is that we need more private companies to report CO2 emissions as well. So for example, 20%, so public companies emit 20% uh, of the direct emissions and around 40% of indirect emissions, right? So. Uh, we will need more private companies to report as well. Now, when you look at public companies, um, right now about 70 to 75 percent of companies uh, report, so of the emissions of the, the public companies uh, report emissions, but that is only about 20 percent of the listed companies, between six to 7,000 companies. So what that uh, means is that we need to estimate data that is uh, not being reported today. And then there is another issue, which is the reliability of the data that is being reported. So from the, the data that is reported today, that data is uh, captured by different data providers or, or investors in different ways. And we found that uh, at least 40% of the times, which is shocking, uh, the data, there are data discrepancies. And I'm just talking about CO2 emissions of the data that is reported, not even about estimations. Uh, what that means as well is that for about 13% of, uh, of the reported data when there are uh, discrepancies, there is 20% uh, variance, which is significant. So that might make a company to move from a bottom percentile to a top percentile or the other way around, right? Uh, and we have seen a few examples in which that happens. So that makes investors not to, not to make the right decisions based on the data that they have in front of them. And again, that's even assuming the companies report the information. I'm talking here about uh, errors in the reported data. So what we do at Clarity is we develop algorithms, uh, machine learning algorithms, to, to clean that data and avoid uh, uh, that the investors make those, those mistakes with the wrong data. Right. So if I'm understanding you correctly, Rebecca, you're able to kind of fill in the gaps that data might be missing and, and report that to the people who are making these decisions. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit um, about the uh, political climate, especially here in the U.S. I don't have to tell you there's been a huge pushback against ESG investing. Just yesterday, Louisiana's treasurer announced that they're going to pull out of BlackRock's fund, who, by the way, is an investor of yours, um, along with SoftBank Vision Fund 2 and Sir Johnny I, formerly of Apple. Um, so they're pulling out and, and basically blaming, look, this is destroying our economy. This is hurting uh, people, especially at energy producing via hydrocarbons like Louisiana, this is hurting investors. This is hurting our investments. Uh, you have the data. Are they right? Or, or, or is ESG investing, does that make returns? Is this a way to make money? Uh, I think the, the first message will be, uh, what do we mean by ESG, right? Because ESG is so many different things. I think in the previous interview, they were talking about that as well. So. ESG has been, the ESG term has been aggregating a lot of different things uh, from uh, strategies to use uh, non-financial metrics or sustainability metrics to try to identify risk and opportunities to much more tangible things like measuring the climate impact of specific companies. Uh, so to your question on uh, should the investors be looking into ESG, the answer it is depends, right? So it depends on what they want to achieve. Now, if we want to mitigate climate change, um, of course, we need to be looking into the carbon emissions of companies. Now, how investors use that data is up to them, right? So do they want to help companies to make the transition? Do they want to uh, be rewarding the companies or investing in the companies that are best performers? 
uh, or do they want to help the worst performers, right? So that, that's the question, and that is uh, for the investors to, to decide, right, and the companies to act on it. What we provide is the software for the investors and for the companies as well, and very soon for consumers, to understand the situation today, right, and the commitments that the companies have made. So, so the investors, consumers, or companies can make the, the right decisions to achieve whatever goals they have. And again, the goal might be mitigating climate change, and if they want to get better performance, they might be looking at many other metrics that is not just climate change, right? It, it will be just one input, right? So, so based on the data you have, Rebecca, what is a state like Louisiana missing either economically or, you know, future looking in, in maybe this push pull between, uh, you know, hydrocarbons and, and, and more environmentally conscious? Like, what, what do your data show? Are they missing money? Are they, are they going to lose money by backing out of a BlackRock, for example? So, so basically what, the, what our data will show is something like, these are the current emissions of these companies. I'm focusing on emissions because it's the simplest way, but of course there are many other things. There, is, there are governance issues, diversity issues. So there are many other metrics that, that the investors can be looking at. But just focusing on the emissions, which has been the, the, the main controversy lately, right? So uh, basically what an investor is going to be making decisions, different decisions, looking at the same data. We guarantee that the data is consistent and is right, and we put them in front of the investors. Now, if you're an investor and you look at the emissions of the company and the commitment, you might believe that commitment or you might not, right? You might believe that Exxon is going to reduce the emissions. You might be believe that they, they won't. A Tesla investor might believe that they are not going to hit the sales that they projected. So basically what we put in front of them is the data that we have as of today, right? The commitments and a potential trend on if they have been hitting those commitments over time. Now, it's on the investor to decide their assumptions for the future, right? We, we don't have a crystal ball. We cannot tell them, is there going to be a carbon tax in the U.S.? So an investor is going to believe, yes, there will be. Another one is going to believe, no, probably not, right? So we put the information in front of them. We put it into the systems that they already use, so integrated into the tools that they use already, like Aladdin or other platforms so they can make their own decisions looking at comprehensive information. Now, if their assumption is that a carbon tax is never going to happen, they might end with one outcome. If they believe in, in a different um, uh, assumption, they, they, they might end making different investment decisions, right? But uh, again, investors are going to use the sustainability data in different ways, the same way they use the financial data, right? Great. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about, again, kind of following the same theme, just this pushback. And, and what you see in the data and what people are saying about it on the other side of it. We have Elon Musk recently saying, you know, people like you are, quote, phony justice warriors. And we have, uh, you know, again, going back to Louisiana and Texas, saying this is hurting the economics. This is hurting people's pension funds. If Elon Musk were joining this conversation with us right now, what would you tell him that based on what you're understanding and the data you collect on all this, what would your response be? Do you consider yourself a phony social justice warrior? Yeah, so, well, first of all, at Clarity, what we provide is tools to make decisions. So we don't take a stand. I'm not going to say you should always look at this type of companies with this type of ESG score. We just allow clients to look at the information they have today. As I said, I, I, I'm not going to make a, a stand on... Uh, so I believe companies need to be more sustainable. Our mission at Clarity is bringing social impact to markets, so bringing the information to make the world more sustainable. But we don't get into, into um, making judgments on what's going to happen in the future. So uh, regarding uh, Elon Musk uh, complaining about ESG, what I will say is, again, ES ESG is a very broad term, right? Like, I think uh, Elon Musk was complaining about ES uh, Tesla being not, not being included in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Now, the Dow Jones Sustainability Index is about comprehensive ESG score, which includes many more metrics apart from climate. So ESG is not just environmental, right? So um, now, uh, as I said before, so Tesla is a great company which is going to help uh, um, mitigate climate change. Uh, now, it all depends on if they hit the, their numbers as well and how fast they can sell their cars and how fast we transition uh, the, the energy, energy mix of the countries to, to uh, uh, more renewable energies, right, or cleaner energies. Um, it, it's not just about what the Tesla 
numbers are today, right? And we are not, again, we leave that to the investors to make their own assumptions and their own judgments, right? What is important is to understand what we want to say. So what if, if Tesla is focusing on climate, that's great, but maybe they should improve other things like um, the governance metric uh, to get a better comprehensive sustainability score, right? At the eyes, on the eyes of, uh, in this case, S&P, Dow, uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, right? But right. again, we don't take a stand on if a company is better or worse for the world. We leave that to the investors right. using the tool. And, and let's talk really quick, lastly, about, about those investors and the clients. I know you have trillions under management from the various clients and funds that use Clarity AI to make these decisions. What did those people tell you? Why do they want Clarity AI? Are they trying to push companies towards this more ESG environment? Are they just simply trying to make money? What do they say they want your product for? So I, I guess it depends a lot on the investors and even and even on the individual investors within the, the same team or the same company, right? So there are a few investors who are trying to identify opportunities or mitigate the risk of, of their portfolios, right? Again, they make an assumption and they say, I believe uh, climate change is real. I believe this is going to be a risk for my portfolio. And they make sure they include those risks into, into their analysis. And I'm talking about pure financial analysis. I'm not talking about uh, looking for a better world here. But there are other investors who have commitments and plates uh, uh, as well on, on achieving a specific social and environmental goals. And they focus on those. And it could be something as narrow as, as I said, climate or getting a net zero uh, alignment of their portfolios in a specific period of time. Or it could be something much more comprehensive, which is different commitments around the 17, the 17 UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And there are others that might have specific commitments on food waste, right? So they set their own objectives. And uh, all of them, of course, prefer first to mitigate um, any potential risk of their portfolios or identify opportunities uh, trying to find better performance, better financial performance, which, by the way, again, you, you will need those, those metrics. And those are metrics that investors have been looking at for decades now, right? Like investors have been looking, looking at the governance metric or turnover of the employees in the past as well. So it's not new. Um, and then others might look at, at having an impact in the world. And then they, they will look at other metrics and other types of ratios, right?